Christian of Moet. Can we give him a round of applause? So before I get started, a little bit about myself. Just moved to Iowa City two weeks ago, uh, formerly at Anheuser-Busch, where I was the director of the internal customer success team. So customer success, customer experience is my background. This is the startup that I've been working on since 2018, and I'll go through it without any further introduction. So Mo Waite, uh, when I was in the gym, this is how I got started. I realized like I didn't want to be here, especially after I work uh, eight hour work day and then that's in an office building and then go to another office building to work out kind of felt like I was missing something. So I was actually in San Francisco uh, pitching a different startup and I saw this guy, he had gone to the outdoor weight facility there and he had brought his own kettlebell to the park. So I, I saw it and I was like, wow, that makes total sense. You're outside, you're working out, what a great experience rather than me sitting in my now fluorescently lit air conditioned gym again. So that's what, uh, there's a lot of not necessarily issues, but things that detract from the experience in a regular gym. They're somewhat boring, uh, exclusive, hard to access. A lot of times you have to commute to a different side of town to get to the gym that you want to go to, uh, and they're expensive. So $58 a month is the US national average. Uh, surprised me when I saw it too, expensive. Um, a little bit more about the gym fitness industry market. $30 billion, 60 million US residents have a membership, and 67% of those memberships go unused. So there's definitely something that's not going right when uh, two thirds of your customer base is not using your membership. So I saw an opportunity at, in the segment to improve the health, uh, engagement, and then talk a little bit about budget in a second, try and figure out a way to make things affordable for people using the gym. Let me give a second to come back up. So that's where we come in, at the intersection of all these things, so making people healthier with an affordable fitness option. So we thought to ourselves, why is an outdoor gym only available at Venice Beach? If Elon can send his car to the moon, we could probably make some weight racks. Uh, and that's what I did, so I'm a mechanical engineering major, designed uh, the MVP weight rack here, uh, weight rental for parks, or uh, universities, or anyone who will buy one, honestly. But uh, anywhere with the sun as an access point, that's the limiter right now. Ooh, no. So, slide here. Actually, it's not that bad that it's up. Won't talk about this, because it's over here, but this got converted from a PDF. The weights, we have five kettlebells, five barbells. They are outdoor weather resistant. Uh, pricing, so this is what I sell to University Cities Parks, $6,000 with a $125 monthly software fee to run the weight rack. So, how does it work for the members? It, to be or use one of our gyms, you get an annual membership for, if you chose that package, would be $5 a month, or monthly membership, $15, that would be a little expensive, or a $2 hourly rental, you know, you're in the city for a couple minutes and then you want to work out while you're on vacation. So you don't have to pick, purchase a huge package. This would be, if you purchase the annual membership where you could access our gym, would be cheaper than Planet Fitness, which would be the leading competitor in the value fitness market. Um, so this is what's the exciting part, is we're actually live at the University of Florida. So two weeks ago, um, after a year of procurement and everything else that they have there, uh, we finally got launched. Uh, we've had 90 users registered, 35 users have lifted, 12 have lifted more than once, which is awesome to see some repeat users. Some people have lifted three, four times multiple days. Uh, and then uh, that should say, so we've had 100% customer satisfaction. If you take our star ratings, 4.5 stars, we've had no neutrals, or, or we've had one neutral that came in last night. But uh, that's because this guy here, we need to replace the lock. Had a bad experience with the lock. Now we don't have all the slides. We could do a project right here. It would be very simple to install a weight rack. The price would be, again, you're looking at, uh, if you, we could get it down below $5,000, which is usually like the credit card swipe limit for a traditional, um, or a corporation employee, and then you don't have to go through all the budget review cycles. And then um, we just need a partner organization with sunlit land, and then um, someone to help us pay the user fee. But we, I think something could be great here six months out of the year. So 
we're coming up on the part where it'd be a little cool. So that is it. I go pretty fast. So if you'd like me to double click into anything, just ask me a question. So for the University of Florida, we're fortunate that it's going to be year-round. That's why we chose the Florida market. For here, yes, that would be the just take leave the weight rack in place, take the weights off, take the locks off. They're bolt in, bolt out, um, and then put them back in as soon as it becomes nice again. Like what you do with a swimming pool. Would you change your fee structure then since they only have yeah. access for six months? Yes. So I am profitable at $125 a month. So that is, if someone, is, like let's say the parks department just wanted to provide this for free and pay the $125 a month, I'm still turning a profit. So anything that is a user, end user revenue would be split between me and the parks department and then they would take the money as like what they do. I think that, I'm not sure what the gym name is here, but uh, whatever local gym. So they would have that as a revenue stream for them. What type of liability do you have? Uh, waiver, so try to waive as much as I can to put it on the end user and then um, can't quote the entire thing right now, but it's, you, same thing like you sign a fitness waiver to go work out at a park or a local gym. It's part of the app, you have to sign it to sign access. It. Yep. So if I'm from out of town, I can come in with our rapid gap, I can find the place, I can meet the line, it's electronic. Exactly. So if any of you have ever used um, Line or Bird, um, I'm actually surprised I haven't seen them around town. I scan the QR code and they unlock. Uh, I have a demo video that I can pull up as well. Christian, I really like the idea. I've never heard anything like it yeah. before, so that's cool. Um, have you considered uh, for environments like in Iowa, selling also a, a cover, like a, a grill cover for the winter months? You know, that is the second time I've heard that in two weeks as a grill cover, and I've never thought of it before, but it's a great idea um, to, even if it's, you know, you have inclement weather and then just sip it up. I'm sure that I could get a custom fabric shop, but yeah, I, I like to hear it again. Yeah, I mean, it's something that only covers animals and things that get in there and nest. But yeah. Completely encompasses somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but mm -hmm. then uh, mm -hmm. let me just kind of brush up. Second thing, um, so I'm assuming you know these everything in the unit is very durable in the weather. Are you having any problems? I mean, mm -hmm. you had a lock break. Was that a, like a so the lock that? break? Uh, Fortunately, we have a warranty where we just get the locks swapped out if they break. Um, but they're durable. They actually power the bikes at Yellowstone or Yosemite, so they're cool outdoor weatherproof solar powered locks and then the weight racks themselves they are provided through Hampton Fitness under oh the kettlebells don't have a warranty the barbells do have a five-year warranty where they it's kind of like a bed liner coating uh, on the bar handle itself and then uh, no rust areas on the surface of the weight so they're really awesome I should have brought one with me but uh, we've not had problems yet we'll see how we go but Hampton Fitness has all the Anytime Fitnesses as clients at the California coastline, so they do outdoor gyms for them. And they have a little more issue where they are because they also have salt and breeze, so pretty confident in the weight racks. Can you tell me a little bit more about the app? And what is it So the app right now is powered by Bloom.bike. If you search it in the App Store, it's Bloom. And then uh, to white label that app would be 10 grand, where I would have my own app within the App Store that they would support. As far as an advertisement and that being a revenue stream, I've thought about it, but from a startup standpoint, I've learned that you never want to pitch advertising as a funding source. So I was actually looking more towards building a way that fitness trainers could provide courses so you could come to my weight rack and then if you partner with me you can charge for your course and then you get the weights for like an hour or something. But I have not vetted that out yet. I'm trying to stay too much out of developing the app right now until I have more customers. Does the cost of uh, purchasing the product that covers your, your cost of development or construction? Yeah. Installation and everything so that That's the only thing that you're paying. So that's what we did with the University of Florida. Uh, 
at six grand, I'm covered for install. At five grand, I'm not really covered for install, but you know, pricing, early stage startup, I'll just do this install for free. If it was local, it wouldn't cost me anything. It's mainly um, just my time. It takes about, at Florida, it took us two days to, I'll go back to the pictures, uh, four concrete footers, and then, so we had to pour the footers at each location one day, and then we put the racks on top. I can make that shorter, but um, those aren't going anywhere, because I wanted to make it really difficult if they want them gone. I've actually not thought about working with Peloton or any company like that. There's a company called National Fitness Campaign, which builds outdoor parks. They have their goal is to be at a thousand locations by 2021. So they have a lot of body weight installations, and they do have an app that suggests workouts and all those sorts of things. What I, my concern is with going to them now would be, oh, let's just do it, which is okay, and I wouldn't be like that upset if like this got stolen and if someone made it great, but. Kind of want to do it myself, uh, so want to build out the business model at least at a couple more segments. So I was talking about this earlier to some people. Next step plan. This was a government organization who is extremely slow. Uh, I really want to find a private partner um, that would help me on public land, and then with that sponsorship, it'd be a little quicker. But um, have not found a partner yet. We're still looking. I've not talked about that. That is very cool. There's a few local, aren't there? Um, Transamerica, I don't yeah. know what they do. USD. Yeah. USD. Uh, so kind of building on what Aaron had, had said with uh, uh, more of the Peloton and, and helping customers and users mm -hmm. get comfortable with, is, uh, one of my comments would just be one of the greatest areas of friction or frustration yeah. Where am I? What do I do? How do I use this? So just a little bit more affordance that, that might help them. And so like the how to or demonst you know, something there to, to show them. So when I'm looking at the racks right now, I'm just natural. How do I yeah. how do I approach this use this? So I don't know if it's some physical signage there that then can direct them to an app. So on we, their phone they can get the instructions. We do have physical signs here and here that explain how to use it, but we don't have anything like how to actually lift. So when I did my user surveys, that was something that people really wanted was how to actually use equipment because that's a big limiter with um, specifically the elderly or um, mainly it was the elderly that I was talking to. I don't know what to do. That's going to be good for me. Like that was what I was talking to the Columbia, Missouri. Here we do have the benefit that a lot of the my users so far are University of Florida students my age very familiar with my age, younger than me, but familiar with the scan, check in, check out, and as well as have a most free weight system. Yeah, I think it strikes me that you go down that road, what you've got the potential for is, is just upsell incrementally for that user base where you've got some basic demonstrations of the yeah. you just have info traffic even, mm -hmm. but then like, oh hey, you're interested in this kind of thing, here's for like two bucks, yep. you know, a video from one of our trainers, yeah, and I want to, I really, really want to have that as part of when you get to paying me as a gym member, you have access to that content. Uh, I think that I need to be a little more at scale. This is, uh, before, what's good about this is this is my sweet spot, which is hardware design and like sourcing materials. When you get into the software development side, it's a little expensive. I can outsource that, can't really do it myself. So what is a good benefit right now is I don't have any software development that I've paid for. It's all powered by something else, um, which becomes a problem because someone could just start copying these and making them, but um, my, my 
way that I'm going to try and stay ahead of my competition there is I do have a very big customer service, customer success background, and I understand the things that you need to do to keep your customers' clients happy, and that's a big part of running a business as well. I won't ask all No, you're fine. Uh, what about, somebody doesn't return a lead, what is your the maintenance and yep. making sure that the return is true? So you have to take a picture when you're done with the weight with the lock and the weight locked in. So um, that's prevented theft to the three week mark. Um, hoping that continues. The only way that we're gonna be able to, to know if we need to like install a camera or something is through this pilot. And uh, I think a lot of it is also location selection. So if you steal something here, you're gonna have like 12 campus police like right here. So not a great idea. Uh, it looks like you have to, you'd have to carry it. Yeah, you'd have to carry it pretty far to get it to a truck, but that is a, it, it's still a concern of mine. It's still like, oh, come on, all my weights can be gone tomorrow morning. That sucks. So I was in Denver recently, and I was walking by Pawn, and someone had thrown a scooter in there. Yeah. Right, you know, the rentable scooters. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, to get that scooter, you had to, like, you had to do some kind of transaction where they know that you were the last person to use that scooter. How did somebody else get that scooter? And, throw it away, because yep. where's the liability on that? And so with you, I was in here thinking, well, you've got, you, you know that I unlocked it mm -hmm. digitally, and you know I was the last person to use something that went missing. Yeah. Is there is there a way to have accountability with that instead of having to take this picture? So the picture is to just remind people more than anything, because I don't go in and validate every picture, but if the weight were to be gone, then I go back and look at the picture, and then we have a little more to hold you against. If we, Because in the contract, if you take the weight, it's gonna cost you $400, regardless of whichever one you take. So that's within, in the University of Florida, we're gonna charge your student account. And that's the operating agreement that we have, and as part of, just building the evidence if we were to go like small claims, then we have a picture that shows, hey, they didn't, or you're supposed to return it, you didn't post a picture, now that we have another thing against you, if we had to go to court, I would hate to do that, but that's the idea of the picture. It does limit the user experience a little bit, because it's a little slower. I guess I'm missing, maybe I missed it. The, when, when you sign up for an account, uh, don't you put your credit card in? For here, no, you are only, the so only people allowed to use these at the University of Florida are university students with a valid fee-paying uh, email address. So you have to be, you, right, we how, charge your student card. The system knows that's you. So, you code, so, you so oh, okay. card. you know, if no one minds, I'm just gonna show the video. Like, do I have time to show like a two minute video? Is it connected to the internet? Yeah. No, just click yourself to switch, right? Yeah, so long as I don't pull up your Instagram. Don't pull up your Awesome video that I like to show people because it's on the University of Florida's official page, which should make you feel special. It's a little long, but it will do the job if it plays. Give it a second. So you don't really need to hear her, but you can see what she does. So these are the signs that we have there. What's really cool is they have like pull-up bars and tire flipping and all kinds of stuff at this location. The other location we're at, they're excited about, is we are on the other side of campus where they have no facilities. So we are, uh, and didn't mention this before, we actually collect you know the user data so you can see how often people rent it. Whereas if you're at a, if you have like an outdoor gym, you can't track that at all. You usually have someone out there with like a feed counter and how many people are here. So. What's great about this is it helps them build a business case for future gyms. So there, you scan the lock. Um, <laughs> and then 
then that's the system. They, if I go to the second thing, they show or take the picture. So that helps explain how it's used. Just I really want to elaborate on that point again. If uh, I don't know exactly what you all do, but everyone wants their user data. Everyone wants to know who's using the system. Everyone wants to know how long it's being used. And then when you put a playground in, like these kids here, how do you know how many kids are on this playground? So how are you measuring your ROI on a playground? That thing out there is probably 20, 30 grand. And to make a business case for a future installment, you have to have that historical data on a system. So with us, we track that off for you, and we also do all the customer surveys and make sure everyone's happy. And that's a big value part of this. We also, in the future, can do a lot of user data collection, like how old are you, blah, blah, blah. Not without the user permission, but it's another thing that cities want to know. I think to maybe go back to your question, it sounds like this is sort of a, I mean, again, pilot case. I've been there, I know what that is, where you've got special terms. Yeah. Uh, that's how it should be. But, mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking about, I mean, I there's not in my mind an, an analogy between that and like using a private organization to get placed on public land or anything like that. You're going to have to have you know, yep. email address and credit card. Yep. Is there with that current app setup that you have? Is there a way that they integrate with Stripe or that you would be able to? We collect like credit cards and all that. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so you we, could charge if somebody, you know. Yep. So within the app, it's not Stripe, but it's their payment system. PayPal, I think, is what they use. Uh, you, we can correct, collect your credit card information, and then you can select your payment plan, and it can be at the tiered pricing. Uh, future model where I am revenue sharing, that would be the only phase of the contract that I don't have implemented, which is uh, you know, the more users you have, I need to make more money because more people are going to reach out to me for assistance. But I can also... Instead of revenue sharing, I can sh do a tiered user structure. Let's say you have 300 users here, you're paying me at X rate versus 200 users here, you're paying me at this rate. My goal, like let's say dream state, which is uh, three, four years later, what I would like to happen is I would like every rack everywhere in the world that has over 1,000 users paying at this rate splits the money. And then everyone who has 500 to 1,000 users splits the money. And then everyone who has 500 down splits the money from every rack at any location. So they, it's kind of like a franchise operation where you buy the rack and then if you're at that lower tier, you're not making 100% of the profit. Well, you, you get some profit immediately and then you have to get to a certain user rate so that cities and organizations are incentivized to be at a higher rate so that they end up making more money. That's like when I have a thousand of these everywhere. There's a thousand Planet Fitnesses, the goal is to be more than that. And I'm comfortable with, um, taking a little bit of time to get there because uh, this is a project that I really enjoy. It's cool when you go on your phone and you're like, hey, did someone lift today? And you're like, oh, someone's lifting right now. So it's a rewarding experience because I know that you help that person work out. Do you see <coughs> your business model is kind of evolving in a way where you own or I mean, you feel into the travel market. Right? Mm -hmm. So if I go to Florida, Texas, or California, mm -hmm. That's what I would. Or is that going to be decentralized? Where the city, the city, yeah. the city Florida, has a map of where these mm -hmm. are. At scale, I would like to be all one interconnected network, and that's what I think would be the best. It's the hardest to get to because then you're like, oh, you have these terms with this person, and you're on this land, and then you have a more functional fitness model. Because um, free weights are greater, not greater, but they offer a lot of advantages to calisthenic training because you have varying body weight or varying weight not just your body weight on that idea um, just another thing that we're exploring is if we could do weight racks for like a hotel chain and then just make all weight racks for this hotel chain and then they're just a paying customer that bought a lot of weight racks for us and we power it at your hotel chain so there's a lot of different things we can do um, disadvantage of this public model is like I said took a year to sell so I just couldn't do this full time at the rate that I'm going, but haven't necessarily needed to. And I think that if I started, I want to be a little picky with the people I partner with. Really long-winded, divergent answer. Anyway.
So I've not reached out to them. They so I've studied it a lot. Not reached out to them. So like Lime and Zoo or Sang, I think is the owner of that. He they scaled by providing all the equipment for free and getting funded and then charging end users and they're still not turning a profit. But now they're a two billion dollar company. So uh, to get at that model, if I were to receive funding, look, let's say something great happened, I got funded like by Y Combinator. That would be what I would do, is I'd make these things as cheap as I can, which is what Lime did, provide them to the community for free, and or provide them to like the partner organization for free, and then just charge end user, and then if I could get the racks to a point where I'm making them for like $1,500, then I would only need like, I forget the math now, but I would only need like 20, 30 users to make them a profitable business, and then you just keep dropping them everywhere until you saturate the market, and then that is a fun way to go about doing it. It's what Lime did, it's what um, Bird then copied. And they uh, already had, the advantage that they had was this was already happening in China, where this business model was already vetted out for them, and they were like, just like, hey, I have a lot of experience, I've exited a company before, fund me, people will pay for it. And that's what happened. They just got funded, 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 and then they were a billion dollar company in under a year and a half. But they had already proven it in China that people would pay for it. So this is creating an entirely new market, rather than they just built a parallel. There is one other company making outdoor weight rental equipment. They have like a box, they're called Open Gym in Boston, where you scan, or they don't have an app, you go into a website and then like a locker box unlocks and you, they don't have as much equipment as I do. But it's good to see other players in the space because it's something that people want. It'd be bad if I was the only one doing this. Like, wouldn't be bad, but it would, it's more validated now that I have competitors. You mentioned partnering with hotels and running the gym membership basically just through mm -hmm. hotels. Um, have you thought about partnering with not so much gyms like Planet Fitness or something, but like private rec facilities? I'm from a hometown that has a bunch of has a facility that has a bunch of soccer fields, baseball fields. No. Within there, there's you know there's tons of things to do, but you could also throw in like a weight rack or something like that as well. Mm -hmm. While I don't know. I, Where are you from? From Burlington, Iowa, originally. I haven't been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know they have like an indoor facility there too, a big indoor yeah. soccer field where even in the winter you can move that inside. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it costs. I mean, it's different if you're coming and bringing in your kids' softball team versus if you're just coming in to yeah. get back in. But you pay $5 to get in, maybe you pay $10 and you get used to the mm -hmm. weight or mm -hmm. weight or so I, I, yeah, I've not thought about that at all. What I have thought about is just selling the outdoor weight racks because no one sells them themselves without the locks. Just being like, hey, do you need one outdoor weight rack? Because if you're in a facility like that, for example, it's gonna be hard to steal the weight if you're totally surrounded. If it's like an open field and you can just walk to your car, it's different. Um, so there's it's, I know there's sensors. yeah. So they wouldn't necessarily need a lock, but for the places that do need locks, the locks give you the advantage of tracking the user data. They also give you advantage of being able to very, very flexible in what you install. Like, sun is the only, and, and like some decent ground. But I could, you know, sell an outdoor weight, just the equipment itself, because it's good equipment. And I've, I've played with that idea. I kind of wanted to get that membership fee, but it's a good idea. And you can do that as well. I mean, I think it yeah. was, like, when I was in high school and coming home from college, I played softball there. Yeah. I pay for my softball membership, you know, that's twenty five dollars a person for the three to yeah. fifteen. But I still had to pay like two bucks to even walk into the facility. Oh, the so there's like yeah. So well, that's they, interesting. They double up on you. Yeah. It's not great, but whatever. Two bucks. The the gyms get you. Um, I want to be able to put this in lower income communities as well. So that's uh I think that that would be something that a lot of people would use there, seeing as you can't afford a, a regular gym membership, this would be a very, very low cost alternative, and then also be able to give memberships to the people that need them. Can't afford $5 a month, that's 
then we can definitely sponsor that. It's not, not hurting us. Yeah, so I mean, I'd love to put one in town, and I'm sure you folks know some fine folks, and it's really not that much. Uh, five grand if people wanted it, like let's say five thousand, like thousand people in town wanted it, we could do a crowd fund. There's a lot of different ways that we could do to help the equipment price. I, I wouldn't sell it at full price, of course. I live here. Uh, the big part would be the land agreement. If someone knows someone with a piece of land in a parking lot or other, uh, I slightly better location than just like a random parking lot, but we could even do it there. Um, uh, that would be what I would like. Yeah. And if any of you want to talk to me after this, uh, we can explore all kinds of different ways to make that happen. But the goal would be to do something in town. Just that's all I'm going to ask of Iowa City. I don't want to, I don't, I would, I am open to all help, but specific ask, let's get $5,000, a partner, and then we could install one in town. And I'd be really excited to do that. I'd work out there all the time, so it'd be good for me. Thank you.